program. So we were just talking uh, off the air that uh, Pat and I were, you know, we were really saying that uh, I remember making the mistake when people said, uh, you know, uh, we're actually a republic. Land. Yeah, you said it was a democracy. Shut we're up. not. I get it. I get it. I get it. And we used, that used to be the deal all the time. People yeah. would call us up. Uh, you know, you said we're a democracy. Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> Shut it! <laughs> Stop splitting hairs. Yeah. And then we came to realize... You were exactly right. They, they were right all along, because now it's the left that uses the democracy thing, and it's so important because they'll call socialism democracy. Yes. yes. All the time. Yes. Yes. And so it's. Yes. I think it's a critical difference, and, and you've got to call this a republic. So anyway, so we were talking... The reason why we got there is because we, we, we have got to change our language, and and we don't, we, you know, too many people don't understand that. This is, forget about calling your damn senator. Mm. Forget about that. Go out and vote. Get involved, but connect with your, with your neighbor next door. And beyond that, the, what, was, what was Sabo's address yesterday? We crashed his website again for Unsavory all day. Agents? Unsavoryagents.com. Here's a guy who needs funding to be able to do art in Los Angeles. And it's making an impact. I mean, literally 20 posters this guy will make, you know, of Ted Cruz smoking a cigarette all tatted up. And it makes an impact. He's making these, these Hillary's, you know, Hillary 2016, the, the evil monkeys from, you know, the Wizard of Oz. He's making these um, um, graffiti, this graffiti art, and he's hanging them on the wires in the streets. He's, and he's making an impact in California. That's where we need to live. You, yeah. you want to you make a difference, go give $5 to that guy on savoryagents.com. Go give him 5 bucks. Because that's the, 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 if we're not in the culture, if we are not right where people live, we are going to forever lose. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is last night uh, and this morning, um, uh, they were all talking about the extreme right taking over. This is the Virginia. This is the Virginia uh, loss of Eric Cantor. Now, l- let's just define extremism, because Nancy Pelosi immediately came out and said, "Well, that just shows the extremists are in charge of the Republican Party. The extreme right is trying to take over the Republican Party." Let me tell you something. I am so sick of this. We must stop right now from uh, uh, on taking that we are not the extreme right we are the common sense center of this country who is stopping a common core who's stopping common core is it the extreme right is it the extreme left no it is the common sense people right in the center that says this is wrong this is a power grab in america in america not europe but in America, the extreme is someone who takes power away from the people. In Europe, they don't have the power to the people like we do. They never have. They have some form of socialism and big state-run government. You don't have the rights that we have here. Here in America, the extremist is the one who says, you don't have a right to do that. Oh, no, wait a minute. Hang on. You have to go and fill out these 472 forms to be able to do that. Oh, hang on just a second. Anybody who is taking power, usurping uh, the power of the people, anybody who is trying to go around the Constitution, going around the three branches of government, anybody who is not living or enforcing the laws of the United States of America, let's be very clear, that's the extremist. And so what happened yesterday was a return to constitutional common sense, a return to the republic, a return to the common sense of listening to the people. The people know we love we love immigrants. Immigrants make us better. Immigrants make us stronger. Everybody knows we should have a stronger visa program. What's happening is we are losing the best of the best because our government won't allow visas to be given to people who want to come here with talent. We need a strong visa uh, 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 change. We have to reform that. 
So people with talent who come here and work can stay here if they want to. That's what the big corporations are dying for. That's what everybody in Silicon Valley and Microsoft and everybody else. Bill Gates has been whining about that for, for 10 years, and he's right. Why should we bring all of the best people over from India, bring them over here, they make us strong, and just when they're really starting to make it, we, can, we say, okay, your visa's expired, you got to go home. Well, what does that mean for American companies? Why wouldn't we keep the best people in the world here with us? It makes no sense. But they're trying to balance the power so America never gets too big for her britches. That's what that's about. So, yes, we need a good, strong visa program. But what, what else makes sense? Does it make sense to not enforce our laws and send the message that if you come as a child, we're not sending you back? No, it doesn't make any sense because look what's happening on our border. Does it make any sense that we have FEMA springing into action all of a sudden? We've got to get down there because there's a humanitarian crisis. You want a humanitarian crisis? You know what the extreme position is? The extreme position in America today is this. I've got to use all my resources to go help people from another country who have come here illegally instead of putting on a bus, which is just a few yards away, and send them back across the border. Instead, I'm going to spend all of those resources that we're using to build these camps. The common sense solution is I'm going to spend all those resources, and I'm going to take care of the veterans who have waited for medical care and who have already served our country, who we promised. We didn't promise these people from Guatemala anything. They came here illegally under a misunderstanding because the president is lawless. Common sense says... Let's take care of the veterans first. What happened to the liberals who used to say, let's take care of our own self first. Let's take care of our own schools first. Let's take care of our own hospitals first. Let's take care of our own cities that are crumbling first. What happened to you guys? Because common sense says, yes, let's take care of our own first, especially our veterans. So Nancy Pelosi, it is clear that the extreme left and the extreme right, as defined in not European terms, but American terms, those groups on both sides of the aisle that wish to go around the Constitution of the United States of America, those who wish to make up laws as they go along, those who wish to have another set of laws for different groups of people, primarily those in power first. That's the extreme position. And so from here on out, when you hear somebody say, well, it's the extreme right, Oh, you mean you want the you mean the people like John McCain? You mean you mean the people like John Boehner? Because if you're talking extreme right, you must mean the people that South Carolina just elected last night. You couldn't mean Dave Bratt because Dave Bratt is not a extremist in any st- stretch of the imagination unless you're in a European country. He would be an extremist, yes, under a constitution uh that um it, looks a little like China's. But under our Constitution, he's not an extremist. He's a return to those founding principles that have lasted longer than any other Constitution in the history of the world. Dave Bratt is a return to common sense. Dave Bratt is a return to listening to the people. Dave Bratt is is one that says, hey, let's stop spending so much money. Dave Brad is a guy who's saying, hey, we can't just have a president, this guy or the next guy or the last guy, that just makes up the rules, that just says, I will, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover these laws and uh, these laws not so much. That when somebody does something wrong, they're held accountable. This was not about the people on the border. That's not what this is about. What this was about last night was, yes, the people on the border, but the people on the border are just another symptom of lawlessness. What is it that is making the average American, both left and right, upset? Both left and right are upset 
at something going wrong and no one taking responsibility. Nobody ever getting in trouble for anything. You know, I watched the Diane Sawyer um, uh, interview last night. Oh, my gosh. I got... Oh, I can't take it. And here's what hit me, and I'm surprised I didn't see it the first time. As I'm watching it, do you notice that one of her co-workers, a person that she has deemed a friend, somebody she was directly responsible for sending to that station, was killed? There was no talk about that. There was, can you imagine? Now, just, I just want you to think about this. You want to talk about extremism. An extremist in this country is somebody who could actually, on their watch, you imagine this, anybody. I, I, I hired a guy, um, Ben McPherson. Ben was working on a uh, show, I think, for the History Channel. I'm not, I can't remember. But it was about jousting and, and stuff like that. And they were supposed to use some pyrotechnics in the field. And something went wrong with the pyrotechnic. He had, had nothing to do with him. Nothing to do with him. Something went wrong and somebody was hurt. That happened like two or three years before I met him. And when we were doing the stuff for the man in the moon, he wouldn't be involved in the pyrotechnics at all. He kept saying to me, Glenn, let's not do pyrotechnics. I'm like, you got to let it go, man. You got to let it go. He's like, no, no, no. I, I, I just don't want anybody hurt. I mean, it hurt him two years later. It was still bothering him deeply. Did anybody get any sense at all? You know what? You know what? A, you know what a common sense person, not an extremist, but a common sense person would have done in that interview yesterday, and not because we have to plan it, not because, but it would have been authentic. What you or I would have done if you or I were on a job site and anybody died, and anybody died. You would have immediately said, I have laid awake night after night after night, questioning myself, because I knew him. I knew him. I sent him there. Whoa. I, 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 there's nothing I could have done. They would have cried. They would have cried. They would have wept. You would have seen some emotion from somebody saying, I tear myself apart. How dare you? I tear myself apart. There's no sense of that. It, the only time that has happened was when it was in Congress, when she said, what difference does it make? But that was a defense mechanism. That wasn't even a connecting with uh, uh, the ambassador. That, that wasn't a, that was not connecting. That was a defense. I was disgusted when I watched that last night. I thought, look at this person. The people are... Listen to me. Listen to me carefully. Listen to this phrase, because this is the entire problem with the United States of America right now and the rest of the world. This is it in a nutshell. It doesn't go any deeper than this. People were created to be loved. Things were created to be used. The problem is things are being loved and people are being used. That's the whole problem. We don't love people anymore. We love things. People are just either standing in our way of us getting those things or have those things that we love that we want to take or they are people are a an a, a means to the ends of the things. That's the whole problem. We have too many things. We love too many things. That's it. That's it. We need to start loving people again. And I did not see that at all. I didn't see that at all. And what they're going to try to do again is when it comes to immigration, they will use those people on the border to keep those things, those positions of power for them. That's it. That's it. They will use anybody, anytime, any plight, any emergency. Anything that will pull on your heartstrings, that's an extremist. That's an extremist. This is a return to common sense and God help us common decency.